Hello everyone, welcome back to the Medical Projects YouTube channel. If you are new around here, hello, my name is Olivia. I'm a second year medical student at King's College London. And here on the Medical Projects YouTube channel, we create videos every single Tuesday, offering the best tips and bits of advice to boost your chances of getting your dream place at medical school. So if you do like the sound of that, or if there's any content you would like to specifically see, make sure you subscribe to this channel, turn on the notification bell so that you can be notified every time we post, and leave us a comment down below if you'd like to make any video requests. So I know a lot of you guys are fretting about interviews and that content is well on its way. It's in production. It is coming your way starting next week. But today we thought we'd cover a topic that, let me just say, might well come up in interview because I've heard some friends who have been asked this question before and it's something I would have definitely had no idea about if I was asked it. And that is all about how you go from being a medical student to a top consultant what the pathway looks like, how you get into the training programs, and basically what that entire process looks like. Now, because I know a lot of you are pre-meds, you're either in your GCSEs or A-levels, I thought we'd start from GCSE and we'll go all the way up to being a consultant. I'm basically gonna teach you how to become a doctor, which is super exciting. And to be honest, I myself didn't even really know what the training entailed until researching it a few nights ago. So this was as much of a learning experience for me as it will be for you. I hope you find this useful. It's always good to know what your career is going to look like, what the pathway involves, how many years it takes to become a consultant, and it will definitely be a good thing to discuss if it does come up in interview. You can show you're really knowledgeable on what this career entails because they're always looking for students that have an insight into what being a doctor is going to be like, what your career progression will be like, what kind of commitment this career is going to require. So I've shuffled on over because I've done some little hand drawings for you because that was the only way I could visualize it. So I hope you find these useful. But let's start with your GCSEs. So what grades do you need for your GCSEs? This is something I often get asked. And looking online, it seems like you need at least a grade six in English, maths and your three sciences so i believe that's a grade b minimum although it's worth noting that a lot of applicants will be having a's and a stars so basically aim for as many a's and a stars as you can get in your gcse's your gcse's take two years to sit and before you know it you'll be in a levels and <laughs> It's quite stressful in A-levels. So what A-levels do you need in order to apply to medical school? Well, unfortunately, you're going to have to do chemistry. Please note that since posting this video, I realise that there are some universities that don't require you to take chemistry, although the majority of them do specify that chemistry will be needed. I know it sucks. I don't even know why it's a requirement, to be honest, because when you get to medical school, you do very little that is very heavily chemistry focused. And then I recommend you also take biology in conjunction because that will keep a lot of medical schools open to you and then you pretty much have a choice a lot of people do maths as a third subject I myself did geography because I knew maths was not going to happen for me so in the summer between year 12 and year 13 that is when you'll be gathering your work experience if you haven't already done so and you'll be sitting your entrance exams such as the UCAT exam followed by the BMAT exam I believe in November at which point you'll be submitting your UCAS application in October so by this point you will have started in year 13 you will have just submitted your medicine application and that brings us up to well kind of now really where a lot of you will be waiting to hear back from universities about a possible interview interview season normally runs from sort of november up until about march or april and you will get your offers basically anytime between then up until about may which is really frustrating because sometimes you're waiting for a very long time so then what happens you are in medical school how long is medical school well it really depends what program you are on and i'm going to talk briefly about those now the standard medical program, I would say, is generally five years. That is the undergraduate medical program, and that is kind of the A100 program that we all know. There are many six-year programs, either because many universities will require you to intercalate, which is where you take a year out of medical school to study, for example, anatomy, or you might choose to study English. It can be a non-science related subject. So that will make your course six years. It may also be six years if you do a foundation year before you go into medical school. So you're either looking at five or six years as an undergraduate or a graduate if you choose to do the undergraduate course. 
You'll be looking at a period of four years in medical school if you are a graduate applying to the accelerated medicine program. So for example, if you do three years of biomedical sciences, you can then choose to apply to the four year medical program because you've already covered a lot of the knowledge needed in medical school. So then you graduate medical school, which is really exciting and you are a qualified junior doctor, which means you have a good grasp on how to look after the acutely unwell patient but you don't necessarily have a very strong knowledge base on certain areas of medicine. So you're not going to, for example, be a really excellent cardiologist. You'll just know a little about a lot, if that makes sense. So before you graduate medical school, you apply for foundation year training, which are the two years that follow once you've graduated from medical school and you are a junior doctor. And within this period of two years, you rotate around six different specialties, each being four months apiece. So for example, you might do paediatrics for four months, emergency medicine for four months, general surgery for four months, so on, and so forth. So when you're approaching the end of your foundation years, you start applying to specialty training. And that is where you say, you know what, I'm a general doctor right now, but I want to be an anaesthetist. So I want to study anaesthetics, I want to be involved in surgeries, and that is the specialty I want to do. Now, when it comes to specialty training, depending on the specialty you want to do, you'll either be in one of two programs either a run-through specialty training program or an uncoupled training program. And as I said, this is dependent on the specialty you want to do. They are already predetermined and you have to go down the route that your specialty says you have to do. So the names are kind of indicative of what the different pathways entail, but basically with uncoupled training specialty programs, you have to submit two separate applications. The first one will be to do your core training and the second one will be to do your higher specialty training. So for example, some uncoupled specialties include all branches of internal medicine, for example, cardiology, most surgical specialties, anaesthetics, emergency medicine, and psychiatry. I guess this one is kind of frustrating in a way because you do have to do two separate applications throughout your specialty training. So if you think you will have done five or six years of medical school, you will have done two years of foundation training, and by this point you will have applied to do your core specialty training. These are usually two or three years depending on the program you're doing, it depends what specialty you're doing, so you'll do your CT1 and CT2 or CT3 if your program requires three years, and then you'll usually have to do some exams within that period to be eligible to apply to your higher specialty training. So then I will get to my, for example, CT2 year and I'll be applying to my higher specialty years. And these are usually between six and seven years, which is kind of crazy when you think about it because it's just a long time to be studying for a specialty, but that's how it works. So you do your core training and then you do your higher specialty training for six or seven years, and then you are a consultant. It's as simple as that, right? The other pathway you can go down is the run through specialty training pathway. And as the name suggests, this is perhaps the nicer pathway of the two because you only have to submit one application after your foundation years and you don't have to reapply for the higher specialty training like you did in the uncoupled programs. And this means you no longer have CT1, 2 or 3, you're simply ST1 all the way through to the end, so ST7 or ST8, whatever it is, and then you're a consultant. So it almost feels like it's quicker, it's not, it's kind of the same length of time, but it's just you don't have to submit two applications. And you'll do a run through specialty program if you're interested in paediatrics, obstetrics and gynaecology, ophthalmology, radiology, cardiothoracic surgery and neurosurgery. And finally, there is a bit of a unique pathway if you say, you know what, I don't want to be in hospital, I don't want to do cardiology or neurosurgery, I want to be a GP. So many people choose to be a GP because they claim it allows for a better work social life balance. And a lot of people choose to be a GP because it requires a shorter amount of time to become fully qualified. And that is because you do your foundation year one and two like everybody else in the country, but then you go into your years training to be a GP. 
and that only takes three years as opposed to the kind of eight or nine years that it takes to be a consultant in other areas of medicine. So what I think is really interesting looking at the different pathways, I had no idea there was such a thing as a run through and an uncoupled pathway. But you know, I think if this comes up in interview, it's definitely a really good thing to mention because it shows you're really knowledgeable on how your career progression is going to work as you study medicine and work towards becoming a consultant. Medicine is a really, really long career. You're constantly doing exams to progress and you're constantly building up your knowledge. It's not like once you finish medical school, that's it, you know, everything. It really is a career with lifelong learning. So it's worth thinking about whether something like that will suit you or if you think you might find this quite stressful. So I hope you guys found this video informative and it taught you something. We're going to be rolling out loads of interview content over the next few months. So do let us know if there's anything in particular you would like, or if you've got any invitations for interview, I'm always rooting for you guys and love to know about where you've heard back from. But I hope you've enjoyed this video. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done so already and I'll see you next Tuesday. Bye.